Last week, the Republican plan for health care in America went to Congress for a vote, then was pulled from that vote at President Trump's request when it became clear that the vote would not pass. So uh, Dr. Timothy Callahan is back for us. He's our health politics and policy expert from the Texas A&M Health Science Center. Dr. Callahan, let's revisit for a second. What happened on Friday with this vote and why? Yes, yeah, so we knew for a while that this American Health Care Act was going to be going up for a vote in the House of Representatives, led by Speaker Ryan, and that President Trump was behind it. Uh, but as the vote got closer, it became clear that the Republicans just didn't have enough support in the House to pass. Uh, you had Republicans who were very moderate who opposed parts of the law, and you had more extreme uh, right-wing conservatives in the Freedom Caucus who were also opposed. And with those two groups both opposed and the Democrats not supporting it, there just wasn't enough votes for it to pass, so they pulled the bill. Sure, it's pretty hard to please everybody on health care, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, so what happens to the American Health Care Act now? Is that is that bill just dead or can it go through the whole process again? I think that bill, as it's been discussed, is probably dead. Mm. Uh, they tried to make as many changes as they could to get more Republicans on board, but the more changes they made, they made to make the Freedom Caucus members happy, the more upset the moderate Republicans got. So I think whatever happens moving forward on health care, it'll be a brand new bill. Uh, we won't see much more of this American Health Care Act. So health care in America, where do we stand right now? Just Obamacare? Obamacare. I think we're certainly much better off than we were uh, before the presidency of President Obama in terms of number of people who have health coverage. Uh, and we're going to continue to see um, modest coverage gains over time through the Affordable Care Act as a Congressional Budget Office predicted. Now, there are certainly problems with the Affordable Care Act that would have needed to be taken care of whether Hillary Clinton had become president or with under President Trump. But the question is whether or not President Trump will choose to make any of those changes. Interesting. There's another player in this that you mentioned, Tom Price, the Secretary of Health and Human Services. What's what's he doing? Do we know if something's happening behind closed doors? Right. So President Trump has talked about potentially phases one, two, and three of his health care plan, and Tom Price is supposed to be heavily involved in phases two and three, hmm. uh, which weren't discussed that much. However, uh, now that this American Health Care Act has failed, there is some thought that the Health and Human Services uh, under Tom Price would make some administrative changes. Uh, it's unclear what those changes might be, but there's some speculation that it might be in the area of Medicaid, uh, potentially altering who is eligible for Medicaid under that program. So what you're saying is changes could still come to health care that don't necessarily have to go before Congress. Absolutely. I think we, we will see some changes, and they're going to be modest changes that occur at the edges of what's currently known as Obamacare, or the Affordable Care Act, uh, but they could end up being modest but significant changes, right? They might not be big, but they could have large implications for who gets health care and its cost in America. Interesting. The Republican Party, in terms of Congress and legislation, standing right now on health care. Are they just taking a step back? What's happening? Yeah, I think uh, the, the Republicans in Congress are licking their wounds and, and moving on to other parts of mm -hmm. President Trump's agenda. So uh, they still have to pass a budget in the next couple, couple weeks, and, and that's certainly going to be a major topic because passing a budget has not necessarily been easy for the past few years at the national level. Yes. You're also going to see them attempt tax reform, and we also have heard lots of discussion about President Trump's uh, plans in the area of immigration, and I think uh, between the budget taxes and immigration, the Republicans are going to be plenty busy with those other issues. I would stay. They say they will uh, yeah. stay occupied, certainly. Um, um, if in the future they decide to come back and tackle health care again uh, and say they have about the same makeup in Congress that they do right now, what approach do you think they could take to get this passed? What, what could the bill look like? Well, it's, you never know what a bill is going to look like, and they're always several hundred pages long, but I think it's safe to say that they might look for some more inclusion of the Democrats in the process, because mm -hmm. clearly with the divisions within the Republican Party, you're going to have to find another way to get the law passed. And we could see something that ends up being more moderate, with Democrats and moderate Republicans on board, and the Freedom Caucus upset. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to find a way to unite the Republican Party, which seems a, a bit difficult at the current moment. Interesting. So again, tough to please everybody, uh, but perhaps if you pick certain sectors. Goodness, I'm glad we have you here to break all this down for us. Uh, but for now, it seems that the Affordable Care Act remains the law of the land. It certainly is. Okay. Well, Dr. Timothy Callahan thank you from so the Texas A&M Health Science Center, thank you so much.